let's clarify first, what do we mean by networking? Because I feel like everybody's got their own idea in their head of what exactly that means. Like, I think a lot of people think it'll be a speed dating situation where you pitch yourself real quick and try to sell something and meet as many people as fast as you can. When we're talking about networking, let's be clear what you mean by that. Sure. So when I say networking, all I mean is focused, accelerated relationship building. Um, what you just described is the way that most people think of networking, which is why it's kind of a bad word. It's a buzzword for a lot of people. They usually, if you find somebody that just loves networking, they're probably not good at it. They think they're good at it because they go to all the networking events and they have, they always have a business card in their, in their front pocket. And they, you know what I mean? They, they, they have a box of a thousand of them in the car just to make sure that they're prepared. They got the name tag ready. They got the, you know what I mean? Like they, they're just the, they're, they're the picture. I call them networking Ned. The, the picture of the slimy networker at the event that everybody's trying to avoid because he has no interest in adding value to anybody else or building relationships. All that person cares about is closing business now. And it, networking is not an in-person cold calling opportunity. And that's how a lot of people treat it. Networking is simply getting your foot in the door with people who have similar interests that you have and building a long-term relationship that could potentially lead to bigger deals and better things in the future. It's a long-term game. It's not a short-term game. And most people that do it incorrectly treat it like a short-term game rather than a long-term game. So networking is all about building relationships based on real reciprocal value that are in that that's in those in those relationships and, and most people just don't look at it that way yeah i love how you explain that definitely it's about building relationships adding value to other people's lives and just getting that communication doorways open for later yeah. if it right. works and, out it's just, yeah it's just a little bit more directed it's a little bit more on purpose right like i i tweet all the time like uh, go, going to the bar with your buddies and playing darts and meeting some other people that's networking. You're building relationships with people. The difference is that at an event that you're going to for the purpose of, of quote unquote networking, you just know that you already have commonalities with those people. And there's a lot higher chance of you finding synergies and being able to connect on certain things, right? So if you, if you meet some random person at the bar, the odds of you guys being in a similar industry or having similar friends or groups of people that you're interested in building relationships with, like they're just really, really low. You know what I'm saying? So when you go to an event, you're just building relationships the same way you would be doing at the bar with your buddies playing darts or pool. It's just that it's just that it's an accelerated, directed, focused relationship building opportunity because you already are starting from a certain point. Like you already know, you know, something like PodFest. I know everybody here has an interest in podcasting. They either have a show or they're about to start a show or they really want to do some research to figure out what would be advantageous for their show or they have a network or like some, but like we're here because we all agree that this thing is pretty cool. So that's like a basis for connection and every human connection that you have, you know, you're always searching for commonality. Um, you're always searching for how do we connect on what, what level and, and how can we further that connection? And so, you know, networking to me is just relationship building, just directed, focused, and uh, um, accelerated. I love that. You touched a little bit on networking, Ned. What are some of the other mistakes you see people make when they're yeah. at conferences, events, or just really anywhere where you got the chance to meet other people in the same industry or business? Yeah, in-person cold calling, meaning that you're asking for the sale after you just met somebody. That's like, that's uh, this illustration is what people use all the time, but that's like trying to get married on your first date. You know what I mean? Not proposing, like getting married. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like your first date and you're like, Hey, I got a reverend in my house. Let's, let's, let's get hitched. You know, like it's, just, it's not how it works. Like, it's I don't know. Like, how do you want to have a cup of coffee? It's do you yeah. want to get married? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't understand why people think it's going to work. And the people who swear by that type of networking, bro, they're always the people that have to continue doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like they're like the person that swears by that type of networking is the person that is, you know, some state farm insurance agent that makes 70 K a year from new business they get at networking events. And they've been doing it for the last 17 years and they're going to keep doing it for the next 15 years. Because if you build relationships with short term in mind, then they're going to be short term relationships. That's how relationships work. You know what I mean? Like if, if you, if, if, if you are building relationship 
with a taker and you build your entire network full of takers, which is usually the people at those types of events. And that usually that's, that's the networking net. They're a taker. They're there to take from other people. They're not there to give to other people. And will it work? Yeah, sure. Cause it's a numbers game, right? You can shake a bunch of hands. And if you meet 300 people in a night, the odds of one of them needing insurance is probably pretty high. You know what I mean? So you can make, make up for it in volume, what you lack in depth in the relationship, but you're going to have to do it again tomorrow night. And you're going to have to do it again the night after that. And the night after that, and after that, and you're gonna have to keep doing it for the next 20 freaking years because you're building a network full of a bunch of other people who have the same mentality as you, which is a taker mentality. So when you have a big project or a big launch or this big thing that you're working on, that's going to set you up for the rest of your life. You don't have anybody in your network that's willing to push for you because they're not built on value. They're built on transactions and you have a bunch of takers in your network. You know what I mean? Like it's just, yeah, not I, I know exactly what you mean. It sounds like you're almost referring to the book give and take where yeah. everyone thinks that you have to take to get ahead. Like nice right. guy, is finished last right the book goes on to explain how givers are the ones that in the long run like you said are the ones that wind up on top because they don't cash in yep. on every, on all their relationships right away they go and they add value they're a friend they hang out you don't even have to talk about business at a lot of these events yeah, you can just right. be cool find out about their families hang out enjoy the experience and then later it could be years down the road. You're building a new platform. You've got Guestio coming out and then you let people know about it. Everyone's just ready to help you out, excited about it. And that's like the long-term play versus going to the next event and having to start all over again and meet all new people, burn all those bridges. And you're turning off the majority yep, of the exactly. people because it's like volume, like you said. So that, that's the big thing, man. In-person cold calling, that's, that's the bad way, right? Thinking short-term, that's the bad way. Um, uh, really really just trying to reframe your mind to be like, look, if I'm in this business, whatever I'm here for, I'm in this for the long haul. Um, and if I need to make money now, tomorrow, then like, I don't know if networking event is probably going to be the top of the priority list. Like I need to do lead gen. Lead gen is different than a networking event. Can you make referral partners at a networking event? Yes. Can you make money tomorrow? If you go to a networking event? Yes. But that should not be your determinant of whether or not that particular event was a success or a failure. And that's the problem that you see is like, you know, have I, like I said, have I done deals with people that I just met? Yes, it does happen. But if you go into the event expecting that to happen, and then you're going to look at that um, uh, time spent as a waste or an, a, a failure, if it does not happen, that's the problem to me. Yeah. It doesn't feel natural either when somebody right away starts right. pitching and trying to sell you something right when you met and you don't, they haven't listened to you at all. They're just talking about themselves and what they want. It just comes across very like selfish. And especially if you're a giver, <clears throat> if you're a giver, you're going to be way more turned off to that. You know what I mean? And like I said before, if you're a taker, you might be like, oh yeah, respect. I respect the hustle. Let's do business. Let's do a deal or something like that. But then, like I said, do you really fast forward 10 years? You really want a network full of a bunch of takers? Like that's not a network that I want. You know, if I'm going to carefully craft the, my network, I'm going to work hard on, on, on surrounding myself with quality people. Uh, they're going to be givers. You know what I mean? Like they're, they're going to be people that are, they're offering value to, 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 to other people in their network and to the world as a whole, you know? Yeah. I mean, really just try to connect with the person before you get down to business. One question I can't stand yeah. is it's so boring at every single event is when someone says, Oh, what do you do? Like your whole life, all you are as a person is like your job. It's like, that's yeah, your whole the, identity. The like there's more to me than that. And I'm working on a lot of things and a few businesses going on. And I don't even know how to start to answer that question. And I don't even yeah. want to, <laughs> I'd much rather you said something like, Hey, um, where are you going on vacation this summer? Or what are you most excited about right now? Like, what are you yeah. working on? That's really exciting. It opens up like a much more fun conversation to have. The, the question I always tell people to reframe because um, frankly, most people ask that question because they don't know what else to say. You know what I mean? They say, Oh, what do you do? Because right. they're worried about an awkward silence and they don't have any other questions for them. You know? So I tell people, ask people the question, how do you spend most of your time? Cause then that gives that person the ability to choose what they want to talk about, you know, like, Oh yeah, I'd like to spend time with my family or, you know, I got three kids. Here's a picture, you know, or, um, you know, actually I, I really, I really enjoy golf. So I spend a good amount of my time like studying golf and stuff. I, I'm no good at it. Blah, blah, blah. Ha ha ha. You know what I mean? 
Um, or, or, it, you know, a lot of times that is going to be the, the question that gets them to talk about work. Cause that is what most people do with the majority of their time is they're at work or they're working on a project or they're doing this big launch, but it also gives them the ability to be like, you know, um, you know, if you ask somebody what they do, they're probably going to think about, okay, well, what's my primary source of income? Here's what I do. You know what I mean? But if you ask somebody how they spend most of their time they're they, it gives them the flexibility to be like, Oh, I actually, I'm working on this new project. It's like just getting off the ground. I have my other business that does this and that, but you know, uh, it, that's just kind of neither here nor there, but this new thing that I'm working on, it's going to be really cool. And here's what it's about, you know, but yeah, it, you, you gotta, gotta get to know the people, you know, it's everybody's in the people game man. Uh, no, nobody's in, nobody's, nobody can avoid that game. It, it's, 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 it's what it's all about is the people game. Like, so you got to get good at it. I love that question. Definitely going to borrow that. So if you hear me saying that at the next hundred M event, <laughs> I'll give you, I'll credit. take full credit. <laughs> I will give you full credit, <laughs> but it's cool too, though, because it puts you in the listening mode and most people right. are going to have a positive experience with you when you're doing the active listening, you could have barely said anything and they just talked about themselves for a while and they're going to walk away and be like, that was a really cool guy. <laughs> Yep. There, there's another, there's another one to add to the mistakes list is people that talk too much. <clears throat> it, there's this like, there's this expectation around networking that you have to be an extrovert in order to be a good networker and extroverts are the best networkers. And they talk because you know, they, it's easy for them to talk and open up to people and blah, blah, blah. I've actually found the opposite to be true in most senses the the best networkers I know are mostly introverts because introverts are better at listening than they are at talking and good networkers are better listeners than they are talkers. And to your point, people will never remember what you say, but they will always remember how you made them feel. And when you're in a conversation with somebody and it's a new conversation, this is like really your opportunity at a first impression. And you just get really good at asking good questions and they get to talk about themselves and their family and what's important to them. Like they leave that conversation feeling fired up and they won't remember in three months what exactly you talked about most likely, but they will remember like, Hey, that conversation I had with Mike, that was a good conversation. He's a good dude. 